Hello traders, this is Shlomo Cooper and we are with a pre-market video ahead of the opening bell of Wednesday. You must admit the one-sided action for the market, as you can see right now on the S&P 500 since the start of this year, had to come to an end at some point and that indeed happened on Tuesday. So the S&P 500 after all has been rising so quickly it has already um, topped some of Wall Street analysts year and 2018 targets and hey we are just in the 10th trading day of the year. Actually as you can see on the chart the, the, the day started with a lot of euphoria and new all-time highs with a substantial gap up to the upside. Traders looked at the morning market surge um, as you know another sign that the market was getting too frothy and overbought. It was a classic ex example of a blow off top but given how much this market has run the reversal didn't do any major technical damage on the daily chart. Some might even say it was an overdue very healthy bout of profit taking. The S&P 500 and the Dow both hit round numbers, big round numbers in early trading um, Tuesday with the S&P 500 crossing above 2,800 for the first time. The Dow Jones, let's put that on the chart. This is uh, through the DIA, the Diamond, the ETF that tracks the Dow Jones. Um, it was racing above 26k. The Dow zipped from 25k to 26k. Let's put it on the daily chart. You know, in just seven trading days, it's fat fastest 1,000 points ever. But that was the morning, and then came the afternoon trading. And by afternoon, the market was in a mini panic uh, attack, and stock. Stocks collapsed. As you can see right now, uh, the S&P 500 closed the gap uh, by 2 o'clock Eastern time and then even continued uh, lower, ending the day very close to the low of the day. So that doesn't spell a lot of good things uh, for today's uh, trading. The healthiest thing would be some downward action for the next two or three sessions. Um, yesterday you did have a bearish engulfing reversal um, pattern uh, and in the Japanese candlesticks uh, it called a dark cloud cover. Um, this is what we had for the S&P 500. That is when on the daily chart the market opens as you can see above the prior high and then closes below the midpoint of the prior range and that is exact, exactly how it looks on the SPY. We also had, had a couple of um, engulfing patterns like in the IWM. Um, this is uh, the ETF that tracks the Russell 2000, the small caps index and the engulfing uh, pattern comes that, that occurs when markets opens above a prior high and then closes um, below the low of the prior um, range and right now the market um, is at the upper end of um, the trading range it's five percent over its 50 days moving average and those are areas you know where the market tends to digest to consolidate if i need to summarize and to make some conclusion while the action on tuesday might have been unpleasant if you've been riding the momentum wave. It was honestly nothing noteworthy. Um, the market gods never like to be taken for granted. Don't take it for granted. And that was how it felt Tuesday morning when everything was screaming higher. However, there isn't any reason to believe that the day's reversal was the long awaited real market top. Okay, we are with hot stocks on the radar for Wednesday. First of all, earnings season kicks off in earnest soon and that will change some of um, the market's dynamics. A pullback here is ideal for stocks that are likely to report strong numbers. First of all, we have Bank of America, BAC and Goldman Sachs GS, which are among the financial companies reporting earnings Wednesday morning. There are a number of economic reports on Wednesday, including the industrial production at um, quarter past 9 a.m. the NAHB survey at 10 o'clock Eastern time and also the Federal Reserve is going to release its beige book on the economy at 2 o'clock uh, p.m. Um, 
look for volatility to increase in the last couple of hours of the day. The market is also keeping an eye on the Bank of Canada, which is expected to raise interest rates Wednesday. Um, after the bell, among the stocks that were, were movers and shakers, um, shares of Juno Therapeutics sold close to 40% in the extended session, and that is after biotechnology giant Celgene was in talks to buy the cancer biopharmaceutical company. Um, shares of Celgene, by the way, edged, edged down about 1.7% in the extended session, both of the stocks, CLG and Juno, should be on our screens today, among the other stocks that are listed in our hot stocks list. Have a great trading day, guys, and I'll see you in our next video. Bye-bye.